Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Property Hustler Show. My name is Andrew, and today Ping and I are joined by a very special guest, Milena Simzik, who is a realtor, a real estate investor, and of course, a TikTok superstar. So, Milena, <laughs> great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me on, Andrew and Ping. I, I really appreciate being here, and I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. When I was first considering any kind of Instagram or TikTok, I was looking up people who I could mimic and copy. And、mm-hmm. when I was looking at local content creators, I found your stuff, and I was just like, oh, she's got like a system. She's She's got things in place and she's producing it. She's brave. She's just putting stuff out there. And I'm thinking, how can I do that? Thank you.、Yeah. I noticed your rise up too. I was like, kind of looking at you and I'm like, oh, I, like, I liked what you were doing. Like, this setup, I took some inspiration from this. I,、uh, I got the fake brick wall as well. So I,、nice. I got that off of、uh, Home Depot. So yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, where yeah, we got、yeah. it from. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it actually, it's got like a little bit of texture too. And I painted it white to, to look just like this.、Yeah. So it's,、uh, yeah, I love your setup here. I noticed you. Like, When you, I think you, when you got around your first thousand followers, I、mm. think I was like passively liking it.、Mm. And then you reached out to me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know he was like following me the whole、yeah. time. So that, that's, that was pretty cool. I do think it's really cool when people start、uh, doing some of the marketing and then you end up crossing paths and then you know, you start. Realizing that the content creator community, it's like real estate in general, is already has a small community, right? right. Of people.、Yeah. People know everybody. And then the content creators is even smaller. Did you have a trouble like putting, out, like putting yourself out there? Yeah. Oh my God. The first video I put out, I still remember this. I was doing YouTube for a little bit as a hobby, but I never put my real name out there. It was just like passive videos. And then the first video I put out, I was, I was, Getting started on getting my realtor license, right? And I'm like, I have to put my name out there now. So, the first video, I'm like, I'm gonna try TikTok. I'm just gonna make a short. I normally make long videos. I made my first short. I put it on YouTube. I put it on TikTok with my name. And then I put it on Instagram where all my family and friends could see it. I swear to God, I felt like throwing up for four <laughs> hours. I literally felt like throwing up. And、um, it, it blew up. That, First video. Really? Yeah, I got over 100,000 views on that one、wow. in two days. And when I tell you, like, the panic that set in <laughs> with the first one going viral, I'm like, okay, now I'm in it. Like, everybody knows, like, I'm in real estate. I'm becoming a realtor. Now I need to, like, no be- turning back. No turning back. It was not an easy journey at the beginning because I-, I was very introverted throughout my childhood and teen years. And then I've had to, like, come out of my shell with nursing and now this content creation. Stuff. <laughs> literally <laughs> felt nauseous. That's even, that's even more interesting. You know, I, it surprises me how many people、uh, you might find online who are pushing out content and they will say they're introverted and then they're pushing out content because it already takes guts for people who are not introverted to put themselves out there. And then if you have、yeah. that you know, personality type of not wanting to do this kind of stuff, that must have been extremely challenging.、Yeah. What told you that you have to put yourself out there? When I get really scared of something, I know I'm going to regret it later on in life. I don't know. I've always been like this. Like, if, if I want to do something and I'm really scared of it, it's like, this is something I'm going to have to do or I'm going to regret it on my deathbed. And I'm always thinking, like, I know, I think really long term to my deathbed. I've been in nursing. I've been around. So, sorry to make、yeah. this morbid, but I've been around death a lot. And it, like, I'm always thinking to that future perspective. That was the reason I put that out. I'm like, the only thing holding me back is fear of judgment. From other people, and that should not matter. Like, we know that should not matter. At the end of the day, like, I put that content out to help somebody else and to explain my story. So, that was my reasoning behind it, and people resonated with that. So, my very first video, I explained how I got my first property. So, my first property was a six unit building that I bought while I was in nursing, and I used a residential mortgage to get it. I lived in one of the units. So, instead of buying a house, I bought the six unit, and I told people, You can do this exact same thing. I just had a regular job as a nurse and I did this. I forget the original question, but that was like, <laughs> that's, that's.、Uh, What made you push yourself out to do it? That、right? was like multiple reasons, like giving value to people. You、um, had a story to tell. I had a story to tell and I knew I would regret it if I didn't tell it.、So. At some point, we're going to see you doing like some skydiving or some. Oh some gosh. Stuff I, like that. <laughs> yeah, now you said it. Now I'm going to do it. I, <laughs> yeah, I've been yeah, telling yeah. myself I'm not, but I know like now that I'm scared, I'm going to have to do it. The nursing thing's funny. So, like, uh, 
King's wife's a nurse, and uh, mm-hmm. I. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Why didn't you tell me that? We're you telling said- you now. <laughs> yeah, we're telling you now. <laughs> okay, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, yeah, Pink's wife. Pink's wife's a nurse. Uh, I was actually I met Pink's wife because I was in nursing school with her. So I also did the nursing. You thing were as well. in yeah. nursing. School. And that's why. No, no, no. That's why says, we have a lot of common ground to go off of here. Why so- did you guys not start off with this? I don't understand. This is like very common ground. Like only mm-hmm. nurses understand. No, that's like, what I'm saying. And okay, what we understand right. about the nursing thing is, you know, when you're talking uh-huh. about the the morbid aspect of it. Right. I remember one of the things we did this case study on, you know, some of the five things that people regret the most when on their deathbeds. Mm-hmm. Right. And one of the things is, I wish I, I didn't worry so much about what other people thought. Yeah. I wish I did things that were for me instead of like for other people. Correct. I wish okay. I said yes to more, uh, to things that I wanted to do that were fun instead of to work so much. And it's just all these things that people regret it and i remember that hitting so hard mm-hmm. especially when you work at the hospital and you see these people yeah and then you see like there's like a twinkle yeah this sounds more of it but it's no, like no, no, there's a twinkle in their eye because it's just like they still have life in them that they need to exercise yeah and it's like you don't want to be like that and then i came across somebody who said this one thing which is that it's better to regret things you've done than regret things you haven't and i thought that was very powerful don't be reckless yeah. but you know be measured and don't be afraid at the very least so right. i thought that anyway <laughs> so i i like the where you're coming from it because that's a unique perspective and a unique mindset like i resonate with absolutely everything you're saying with thinking on your deathbed and all of that and yeah you're absolutely right people regret the things that they don't do rather than the things that they do and don't get me wrong sometimes i regret things that i've done but it's <laughs> you those are learning experiences and you always do better for the next time so yeah. um yeah nursing is was a very very valuable life lesson and and people ask me if i regretted going into nursing first instead of real estate i mean like if i knew what i know now like if i went back to my 18 year old body i would like do real estate because i have those lessons but i would much rather get the lessons i learned from nursing first and then take it into this career mm, yeah so. a lot of people are saying that if i knew what i know right now i would have done things a little differently i had an engineering background oh okay, i'm not really an engineer i'm a failed engineer <laughs> engineer and nurse that is like <laughs> Such a good comp- yeah. yeah, sorry, continue. Yeah, but honestly, like when it comes to construction, right? He's always <laughs> laughing. I mean, he's just like you're an engineer and you don't know a lot of like the a lot of construction uh, <laughs> yeah, knowledge. Yeah, because you think you would know some of this <laughs> stuff, right? But you know, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but here's the thing though: having to go through a program that I didn't truly like, and I, I even I worked uh, mm-hmm. full time for like a couple of years, mm-hmm. it really gave me a different perspective in real estate, right? Mm-hmm. As soon as I got into real estate full time, made my commitment, I realized, okay, this is what I truly enjoy doing but it's literally because I started as an engineer I knew what I didn't like right. and then all of a sudden you put a lot of emphasis on the, on the things that, that we're doing it became, it became a lot more meaningful but if I were to start it right away maybe I'd be thinking about maybe uh, there there might be some other options out there you mentioned you watch a lot of anime oh gosh come on okay okay we talk about real estate we talk about how we go about doing things but right. sometimes I'd like to dig into why okay. there's actually a lot of common personality traits that come from certain common grounds that are, have nothing to do with business have nothing to do with real estate right, right. one of the things that Ping also is talking about right now with being able to do something regretting and maybe wanting to have gotten into things earlier yes. what was yours did you watch so like you pokemon even uh, the pokemon stuff? Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah. uh, naruto um He's attack on guy. titan <laughs> oh, you okay. can go on and on yes attack okay. on titan? <laughs> oh my god that <laughs> that's so good, good. right that yeah. was a okay. good one okay <laughs> no so so let's let's talk about that one of the things i remember pokemon i was watching it and mm-hmm. i remember they had remember they had those uh crystals or those rocks that will um make the pokemon evolve faster yeah right so one of the guys did this to his pikachu became a raichu right and the thing about that was that the raichu didn't learn all all the things that the Pikachu was learning uh, because he didn't evolve yet. There were still skill sets to learn in that stage. Right. Why I'm mentioning this is because if you didn't go through nursing, if you didn't go through the failures or the hurdles, mm-hmm. you would lack certain experiences that you really only learn through experiences. You can right. learn something from somebody else telling you wisdom, right? right. Learning, learning the, the wise way. But some experiences only prep you a certain way. We have a couple of, uh, let's call them mentees, right? Who we coach through how to get into property management, how to get into real estate and all this stuff. We help them avoid certain hurdles and certain mistakes but we also feel like we took away the privilege of them having to learn those things the hard way right because now they they think it was easy yeah that's true right yeah yeah, yeah. so that that in itself has its challenges there's things that you learn and it, you can learn them through cartoons mm-hmm, you can learn yeah. them through life that's and right. you know you can learn them through different ways and it, it really affects you know how people approach real You're, estate there's a saying that people remember feelings more than facts 
And for you to feel the pain of going through something, you're going to remember that the rest of your yeah. life. <laughs> and uh, any mistakes you make in business, like that's how you learn. Like, it, oh God, that really hurt. That really sucked. Let's never do that again. Let's progress on. I totally agree with that. And like going back to <laughs> to to the anime, you do you do learn stuff from, I mean, even the shows you watch, um, if, if they're not anime, right? My favorite uh, genre is like the underdog and then them rising to the top and you see like all the pain along the way what i learned from that is there has to be a lot of pain along the way for you to like transform into something there's a limit to that but um, like, <laughs> yeah no. maybe not to like the attack on titan extent but <laughs> yeah. no, with adversity comes growth without right. adversity you're not going to grow that fast to go back to nursing like that was uh, honestly it was a painful experience for me like i worked as an icu nurse through covid mm. and you know you realize the importance of of life and of family you know i was giving a lot of myself in that career and it was it was really painful and I wasn't progressing like I didn't feel like I was growing or progressing anywhere and I knew that was going to affect the people around me eventually so that that was like one of the reasons I wanted to real estate as well but I would not ever, I would never trade that pain for anything yeah. else so yeah. how long were you in nursing three years three years and yeah. what was the the turning point yeah Oh, yeah, God. thank you. I think you. it was so, like my first <laughs> shift, probably. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the first year is the hardest, the hardest. Yeah. So I went to like one of the worst hospitals in Detroit, and hopefully we don't get sued for this. I'm not naming names, but <laughs> if if anyone worked with me, they know what it is. Um, yeah. so I was in one of the like one of the worst ones with the least amount of support and all of that. Mm. So um, my first shift was a real, real struggle. And I, I worked there for a year. My back was already hurting in my 20s. There were people that worked there for multiple years that were taking steroids for their back problems. And they were in their wow. 20s. And you know, you wouldn't get breaks. Like I could barely drink water through the shift sometimes. I told myself like, I cannot like do this for It's not years. sustainable. Yeah, of course, major respect to nurses. I still like consider myself a nurse. Like mm -hmm. it's hard to get out of that. The people I've seen in there for 20 years, like it, it breaks them and there's the exceptional few that like thrive in that environment but most people break so you pretty much just came to the realization okay this is not sustainable mm -hmm. I, I want a bit of change for myself right but what made you start considering real estate you know you have family influence or anything no no, <laughs> no nobody in like my family in canada doesn't own real estate at all oh, wow. <laughs> yeah we i grew up um in a in a rental basically like we lived in an apartment my whole life i guess like i i did have a little bit of influence there to where i wanted the financial freedom aspect of it like i i saw my parents working extremely hard like it wasn't going anywhere like there was no wealth generation or anything and i thought like when i get into adulthood like is this ever going to stop i'm just going to like work for the rest of my life what is growing on the side like i just have to hustle and chase money all the time so that was an influence as well um on top of nursing being a very difficult career i had the pain to influence me i guess yeah yeah so and how did you pick six plex right off the bat i was gonna start with like a house hack or yeah. a duplex and then i realized like it would likely take the same amount of effort to do a six unit as it would a duplex and i think it really did because i actually got a single family home right after that sixplex to convert into um like a, a duplex so i got a basement unit conversion going on right now that is more trouble than the sixplex ever was i swear so um yeah i like i think in terms of your life quality and the amount of difficulty from two units to six units i did not see much of a difference or maybe the the two units was actually more difficult than the, than the other one obviously there's other factors who got you to think about sixplex right is he a mortgage broker when you were trying to qualify for the mortgage or did you have the realtor who's like a, kind of acting as, as a coach for you did i did you... i did have a realtor that was investor focused so um aditya soma i actually started on his team when i was in windsor as well for a month and then i went on my own and started my own team but he was a he was a big influence so he was investor focused. He helped me a little bit there. Um, and then beforehand, I would listen to podcasts all the time about real estate investing. I didn't have those people in my life. So I had to get those people artificially. <laughs> so uh, Andrew Hines was a huge one and his podcast studio is near here, actually. Yeah. And I can't believe I went on that one, too. So that was uh, insane because I listened to all of his episodes and then there was Bigger Pockets. That was another huge influence. So those two, I would listen on my way 
to and from work every mm-hmm. single day. And that was like my, I, I guess, virtual influence because I didn't have those people around me. And then eventually I got those people around me by going to meetups in my area. And that's when like I took the jump by actually getting physical people around me and pushing me to to get that first one and then from there you saw the opportunity and i guess you decided to also get your realtor's license yes so um that happened a couple years after i got my first property i was still working as a nurse and i i had like a plan to eventually get enough cash flow to replace the nursing income i reached it Uh, sooner than I thought. And now I'm like, okay, well, do I continue in nursing? Like I want to progress my career from here. So I was considering a doctor, a CRNA, like certified nurse anesthesiologist. Those were my two options. And then I'm like, okay, maybe realtor and then save myself the hassle of hundreds of thousands of dollars of going through school, three years of lost work, three to four years, you know, just see how the realtor thing goes. Cause that's like 8K and four months of work. Right. (laughs) And um, it took off. You know, <laughs> obviously, yeah, yeah. No. yeah. No, I consider you to be quite successful, you know, as a realtor. And one of the things I, I think separates you largely is your social media presence. And I feel that that you have such a good combination. Because how long have you been a realtor for? Eight months. Eight months. Whoa. Yeah. You've been a realtor for eight months. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that. I thought you were a realtor for so much longer. That's crazy. Everybody. I thought you really, I thought yeah. No. No. I thought it's been like a few years. You act like you've been doing this forever. <laughs> the real estate investing helped. A a lot so like to invest for a couple years before it yeah, yeah, that, yeah that really helped and then to be putting out like multiple years worth of content in eight months has probably helped a lot too oh so. my god okay <laughs> but, but here's yeah no no but, but i think i think it came from with the uh, older word that you were doing because like the tiktok gave you a lot of credibility a yes. lot of lead generation yes which means you're transacting a lot more than uh un- like average realtors, right? Which give you a lot of experiences, and and that's why that that's that's where all the confidence <laughs> yeah, shows up. Credibility. <laughs> I feel like I've been lied to. I oh, look at your so stuff. Sorry. No, 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 dude. But that that shows how effective it is. I was watching your stuff and thinking, oh, this girl's been doing this for so long. She's experienced because your content goes far back too, right? Right. And yeah. you're talking about this, and you're talking about how you're a realtor and all the things that you know how to do. Mm-hmm. This actually goes to show how powerful marketing is, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. really, what separates you, like. So how many realtors come out every year and how many are there that don't make a living? You know the stuff. 90% don't 90% make a living. Make a living. Well, hey, you're more than making a living. But yeah, I, I would <laughs> yeah. like to think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see your calendar. <laughs> you saw our Teslas outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, also, you know the realtors are doing well when they start rolling up in Teslas, right? It's been going well and you're right. Like the social media gave me so much credibility. And the thing is, I didn't start the social media eight months ago. I started it as soon as I got, like I registered for my realtor license so the four months i went through my realtor license i didn't advertise myself as a realtor Mm -hmm. i was like i'm a real estate investor i'm still a nurse and i'm becoming a realtor and you can see like i had these little uh buttons on my videos it said soon to be realtor Mm -hmm. and real estate investor in windsor like it would pop up and it would do the popping sound and yeah (laughs) so (laughs) yeah like that you know it so (laughs) um but yeah i did that for four months while i was getting my realtor license to set myself up because i always tell realtors that are just getting started in social media you have to give it a minimum of three months before you start getting leads minimum Mm. and that's what happened like three months in i started getting leads a month before i even got my license so i started giving it to the team that i was eventually gonna go on i I didn't get any referrals it was like good faith sort of thing But um, yeah, so uh, and as soon as I started, I was like ready with leads. I was good to go. And were those like investor leads or more like a single family? Mostly investors. Mostly Mostly investors. investors. Because I advertised myself as uh, someone who was getting out of nursing because of my real estate investments. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was basically a real estate investor then i wasn't a realtor so real estate investors found me and they approached me and uh, most of my clientele is still real estate investors but i do get a lot of uh single family homeowners i i have a few in the luxury division but i love the ones that come to me for live in flips or future opportunities Mm -hmm. so they're just getting started they're not quite ready for like the duplex or sixplex um and they want a house with potential yeah i'm really good at finding those so (laughs) You know what? Uh, a lot mm-hmm. of people have skills. They, a lot of people have mm-hmm. c- capabilities. But I think mm-hmm. a lot of people's challenges is getting themselves out there, getting them in front of the audience that right. they need to target. And I think a lot of that has to do with marketing. So I want to ask you a few marketing questions since you have some good experiences, good results, and a great presence online. So I Thank mean, you. I think so at least. So, <laughs> Thank you. you know, um, you've already demonstrated that some people, some people will wait 
to do what they're doing to showcase it online. But you were you were showcasing before you even had anything going. So right. I think this really t- is a testament to how people should really just get the ball rolling. And that's the thing. Social media, it irks you. you yeah. You're afraid to have to put yourself out there. there mm-hmm. There's a degree of bravery that you need to have mm-hmm. and to do that. And then you're also thinking, am I being fake if I'm putting it out there beforehand? Definitely had all of those thoughts. I still have a little bit of imposter syndrome here yeah, and there. Exactly. I'm like, am I even supposed to be on this podcast right now? Like, do they even know me? <laughs> <laughs> were we supposed to invite her? <laughs> yeah, were you supposed to invite me? I had all those concerns when I first started. I told you like I felt like throwing up when I put out my first video. The thought I had in mind, you are not going to be afraid if you're doing it for others so I had this thought that I'm like okay this is going to benefit someone else I'm not you know a top real estate investor I don't have 500 units yet and <laughs> but it's coming it's coming but um yeah so I I thought to myself I can help the person who's a step behind me I can always help the person who's a step behind me and even if you're a realtor and you're not an investor yet you're going through the schooling share what you're learning in schooling share what your experience is going through the realtor process like what are your fears like what's your story like you do not have to be at the top to give advice like you just have to share something with someone one step behind you that's it and that's what i did with the six unit like that my first video was for beginner investors just to show people okay like you don't have to buy 500 units with jv partners right off the bat i had a regular job i bought this with my own money right away while I was in nursing and this is how you could do it too. That's my advice, like just focus on helping others through your videos, how you can provide value to that person one step behind you and then take it from there. Yeah, and just yeah. treat it as a journaling uh, of mm-hmm. your own like journey, right? Just right. Uh, making making sure that you're documenting everything that you're doing because as you're going or growing, like the things that you're doing will be different and right. you will also be attracting different type of audience. Honestly, both me and Andrew have a lot of trouble putting contents out there, putting our faces out there. Yeah. We're not social media guys, to be honest, right? It's I couldn't like, tell. Not... I could, you guys are doing really You're good. You're introverted, you said? Right? <laughs> yeah. Come on, you, she's lying. I am not. <laughs> no, but, but here's the thing, though. Every time I see an introvert getting out of their comfort zone, mm-hmm. they have to make a huge commitment compared yeah. to people who are a little, a little bit outgoing. Right. Right. So the moment that you made that commitment, you guys like really stay consistent with that. There's no turning back. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're out there. You got to yeah. prove it. <laughs> just staring at him. Uh, he looks like he has PTSD. He's like staring uh, off know, into the yeah. okay. All the memory can die. I know. You nailed it on the head with uh, being able to help other people, right? Uh, and, the, and sometimes the imposter syndrome is like a lot of people, even some of the people who come to us who have done some real estate, they want to know what they how to scale up. Mm-hmm. And then they start saying, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm really new. I'm really beginner. I'm just like, you yeah. have four properties, right? Yeah. Like, what do you mean you're a beginner, right? right? It's just like, well, I mean, like I didn't do anything that sophisticated, but it's like you have no idea. Mm-hmm. Even with the seemingly few things you've done, Mm -hmm. how much knowledge you have over other people. Share it. It might seem like it's simple to you, but that's the problem is that it's just simple to you because you've done it. Right. right? But you can share the details of that, what it actually means. Even if you talk about it from an emotional perspective, because there is a huge emotional aspect of needing to contend with how you feel about things like spending the money, putting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things you can teach. So there's always something to share and people shouldn't feel afraid about it. I want to ask them the question, you know, about some nitty gritty marketing stuff. What was the first camera you used to make that first video? Uh, Sony ZV-1. And I do not recommend it it burns <laughs> up. It that's very bur- specific yeah yeah yeah. it was it like it burns up i hated that i'm sorry like i, I hope i don't get sued for this but yeah I, uh, I, this is I, a review okay okay good good it, it, of course personal opinion but yeah it, it was a good starter camera if you're using it for tiktok and you want like a minute or two of footage but i i wanted to use it as a vlogging camera and youtube eventually and that didn't work out so yeah sony zv1 mm-hmm. it's about i think 700 to a thousand bucks so i did get a little bit bougie but you can start with an iPhone. Like, just start yeah. with your phone. You get the proper lighting and some, like, a little lapel mic. That's all you need. As long as you're giving value, this is a really fancy setup. And I know we've been talking yeah, about yeah, it a yeah. lot. You don't need all of this yet, but <laughs> it's no, really no. nice to have. People will emulate these things with just like these Amazon lights in the background with like the, mm-hmm. the film layer with the color right. at the back. And it's just, it's simple and easy to do. And exactly. people sometimes forget that it largely has to do with just practicing. Right. You just have to start because you don't know what you need. People over prepare sometimes over script right. over figure out everything that they're trying to do and it's right. just like you know, teleprompter so you know we got 
that one over there. Yeah, yeah. it's the second oh one we got. <laughs> you guys got the teleprompter. Yeah, too. but we yeah we, we have to geek out over. All yeah, that no, right, right, right. yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's like what it, what it, so you started off with that camera. What kind? Mm-hmm. What were you using for audio? Uh, I had a Ellie Ellie Gato mic. It, I did go a little bougie. That's like two hundred yeah. bucks. It's like a really good YouTuber mic. So like my overall setup, um, I didn't even have. I don't think I had lights back then. But yeah, my overall setup was around a thousand bucks for that hundred k video so that was uh yeah it was wasn't too bad but honestly like i've done videos that took way less effort literally like on tiktok i put two pictures together with some words that one got five hundred thousand views yeah. like that i don't know if you've seen that one where where like i compared my my first month's salary as a realtor compared oh, to yeah, my yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's crazy because you've yeah. actually and, it, and that's where it's just a matter of just putting 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 that's not the only one you've done like that you've done right. that type of video a few times and yeah. some of them catch some of them don't right, right. and exactly. it's like uh you just have to just do it right Ex- put yourself out there i gotta stop saying that 100 <laughs> percent. it's like put yourself out there now it's starting to have a different meaning but. yeah yeah <laughs> this is i think one of the things that i feel at least when i look at you separates yourself largely from other people who are in the industry is not only your courage to endeavor into the real estate ventures that you do but also to showcase what it is you're doing share it out there put it out there in an authentic way too for Lee. I like i like the, you. everything you're saying is very real <laughs> thank right? you yeah <laughs> the, the number that you're sharing is also a real number right because mm-hmm. we've seen some influencer who are just like putting stuff out there mm-hmm. and there's no way to verify, but you right. are. I re, I see your comment, <laughs> your reply to you, some of the people was questioning about your portfolio, right? And you were just like, okay, just check check these two addresses, right? Exactly. That's my portfolio. That's yeah. my record. I believe in telling the truth for everything. Yeah. If you lie, you have to have a very very good memory. <laughs> so yeah. you tell the truth. You don't have to worry about that. You can be more confident in yourself. So yeah, if if I say something, like I have facts to back it up. Sometimes I'm wrong, and if somebody presents me with those facts, I will admit to it. That's just like a learning process Mm -hmm. you know i'm like we're in the first quarter of our life over here we're gonna make mistakes but yeah for for that one i do remember like people were doubting it and then they were doubting my nursing salary too and i'm like here are some indeed applications (laughs) there's the salary (laughs) but and then you know at the back of your mind just like i don't need to prove anything to you yeah exactly (laughs) and then yeah i remember that as well i'm like why am i wasting my time right now but like there's also there's like a I, i found there's a good balance on social media where sometimes you have to back it up especially on tiktok like you're only presenting 10 seconds and there are no facts behind it so sometimes i like to just put a couple of comments Mm -hmm. that point to true references it's like okay this is why it's true i'll pin it at the top and then people can just look at that yeah so they don't look at the other comments that are like putting you down because honestly those those can affect you don't let it affect you personally but it can affect you like in the social media world so any claims made against me i will put down but i'm not going to take it personally it's like here are the facts do what you will with it it's out there how long so. did that take you to get over that kind of a haters comment oh, i i start remember are you over it now i'm over it now <laughs> okay. you know there, there's always moments in your life where it's like you look in the mirror it's like oh my makeup isn't as good today i'm gonna take in all the hate but yeah it's it's uh sorry that was that was a bit weird but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's real. sometimes with logan who's editing our videos my hair's not right i'm just like logan edit out my hair all all the throughout the video this is my personal <laughs> request if that was recorded at the beginning put that in the podcast okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um anyways uh where was i going with that oh yeah you know you have your bad days yeah. but like obviously it gets better and better and i told you like i was on youtube for a few years before that and you like my videos sucked like back then so i got a lot of hate and understandably like they sucked so i got used to it and sometimes there's things you could take out of those comments sometimes there's not you gotta know and it comes through years of experience to yeah. differentiate it but tiktok is like they, they massacre you they're so mean yeah. well, that's what <laughs> it's all about the comments with tiktok yeah. right so oh then it's God. like it's just that's where trolls live yeah oh my gosh i i like i have experience on on youtube on instagram on TikTok, Instagram's the nicest. Mm-hmm. Facebook and TikTok are the absolute worst in so terms of toxic. comments. They are so <laughs> toxic. It's it's so bizarre. I I don't know. I think people are just very unhappy scrolling through that. Like if you're on it for three hours, you start. Yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. yeah just like, getting pissed off. Why is he or why is she doing better than me? I yeah, know exactly. Like, yeah. I know, <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like the people. The truth is, and this isn't to put anyone down who's like that, but I mean, hmm. I I imagine sometimes that when you're in a slump and you're just scrolling TikTok, right, yeah. and somebody 
somebody is saying that they're doing well and you can too, you're just like, shut up, you're yeah. lying, right? So, exactly. I mean, it's easy to get that. I want to like talk a little bit about the reaping the reward of mm -hmm. such a thing. Would you say you attribute the majority of the business that you get from your social media efforts? It literally, like almost 100% of 100%, it. Right? 100% yeah. of it. Even my social circle, they did not approach me until they saw my social media. Mm. So, maybe I could have approached them first, That's but they funny, came eh? to me. Yeah, they came to me. So, almost 100% of my business comes from social media and now I have enough leads to sustain two team members right now and I have an assistant and I'm getting like the social media team. eight months yeah. in with a <laughs> realtor's license that is crazy by the way did most of the conversion happen on TikTok or Instagram Instagram and YouTube TikTok's basically like a huge net and then if people want to learn more about me they go to Instagram they go to YouTube and on every single one of these platforms I have a link tree with a bunch of free resources for clients and all they have to give me is their name and their email address and they get like a free price guide to Windsor in Ontario like real estate prices aren't transparent mm -hmm. especially in Windsor like we have not caught up to House Sigma or Zucasa for the sold prices and not everything's on there so I have a price guide for every single neighborhood showing the average prices based on MLS data in every neighborhood and descriptions of each neighborhood very valuable for anyone looking at buying or selling real estate in Windsor, Ontario. So people come there, they get it for free, just an exchange of information. And then I call them or message them and see if I can help them with anything because they're looking at that for a reason. So that's how I get the majority of my clients. Like they go to that that newsletter. And, and that means they're just giving you like their email address and then you contact them and right. set up like a conversation, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then obviously I have um, the lead funnels for people that just want to skip that step and directly book a call with me or um, like just put their information in and people do that <laughs> how many of these potential interviews do you get a month well, maybe i've been with going probably around 10 calls like 10 appointments set up a week i get around 40 on the newsletter every week 40 to 50 how many appointments converts into a, a, a serious bio seller if i got them on the phone they're already like a warm lead 99 percent of the time they're a warm lead if they're calling me those 10 appointments a week uh they're warm to hot i think i had about eight this week i got a couple more tomorrow <laughs> and uh or three more actually yeah and uh yeah i send them now to my team members because that's not sustainable for me to convert every yeah. single week yeah it's just that's about awesome. providing value so if they feel like they got enough value through my videos they'll you know book a call with me right away if that's yeah. not enough i got newsletters i got real estate calculators you can sign up through there how Perfect. many how many newsletters did you send out to through your email like the email campaign my newsletters consist of property opportunities and Windsor um, and then my price guide. So if you sign up for my newsletter for like the price guide newsletter, you get it every single month and it's updated every single month by neighborhood. And my assistant helps me uh, put that data and I got a system for that too. Once to twice a week and then any YouTube videos go out in the newsletter and it's always like information about Windsor, Windsor market. Mm -hmm. I always try to provide value. So this is more like a realtor conversation. Yeah. yeah. How do you handle a tenanted property listings, right? A listing with a tenancy in there? sometimes mm -hmm. they're not so attractive we're working with a lot of investors so most of the time they understand like the work that has to go into it when we list a property that's tenanted we always try to appeal to investors because my newsletter has like over a thousand investors in there so i send these properties to them i explain the potential i explain the rents i mean in terms of dealing with the tenants like ourselves we like my assistant actually helps with the communication there the 24 hours notice and all that just like anything in real estate i guess tenants are a big big problem in Ontario at the moment I hate yeah. to say it but yeah that's one of the things I always wondered about when when it comes to the audience coming in because for example even like with some of the stuff we target investors as well right and uh, largely we always hook them with problems or sorry solutions to their problems right, right. and that, sometimes whenever we give advice on how to deal with tenanted properties mm -hmm. the only problem that sometimes comes from it is that you're literally only getting a population that has made a mess right. of a situation or went into real estate with the wrong understanding the wrong expectation picked the wrong tenant Right. And then now you're in the picture because you're just like, I am the solution to your problems. Right. right? Yeah. So uh, do you find that you get a lot of people coming in thinking that you can solve complex problems? Yes. And I have helped a lot of people solve complex problems <laughs> and got and I, I got nothing out of it, too. Like and I didn't expect anything out of it. So like in my business, I come with the mindset to help people whether or not there's a sale. Even if you don't think it's from a moral standpoint, it benefits the business long term. And I explain this to people like I'm not I don't want 
want anything out of you. Here are the resources. I want to make sure you get out of this. So I had a couple of situations recently where um, one guy, he had a problem tenant. I gave him the paralegal. I gave him the Ontario laws. I actually used to work in a tenant legal office as an assistant in between like my my nursing like so, a tenant clinic yeah like a like a free legal advice for tenants so oh, it's okay. like lawyers that give free advice to Got tenants it, yeah, and yeah. i learned everything yeah. that te- like all the rights that tenants have in there because i would got have a lot to of speak. rights oh they got a lot of rights yeah. yeah so that experience helped me like educate whoever comes to me that are that is dealing with this problem so i give them the resources like here's a good paralegal here's like here are your options from my experience but obviously consult with someone legal. I got a couple people out of bad situations. And then there's some people that come to me where the property's in distress. Um, There was one where they had a work order. They couldn't get tenants in. The city wasn't really helping them too much with closing this like permit, Mm. right? So I got them a contractor that closed it for them in a couple of months. And like, I just connect them to the right people. I didn't make any sales off of that, but I helped them. And that's like that's the goal. Well, that's a good reflection already on what you bring to the table, especially being an investor, right. is that you have an understanding. One of the things that a lot of people come to us when it comes to their fear, things that they're afraid of, what if anything happens, not really realizing that when they say your network is your net worth, right? And that same thing over and over again, we right. keep hearing, right? Uh-huh. But it's like, as long as you know who to call right. to solve a problem, you're not expected to know everything. You just need to yes. know who to call. And if you don't know who to call, know somebody who knows who to call. Right. right? Yeah, 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 exactly. We're not talking about Ghostbusters, but yes, yeah. <laughs> talking about something close <laughs> goes by we're going back to the yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> you're the only one i can save you <laughs> But yeah, I I 100% agree with you with, I believe that's called the, the, I forget what this one book was called, but there was like the connector in that book, like the four four rich people or whatever, I forget. Mm -hmm. I I don't even know the book, but I remember the connector because this person would connect other people to the right people. So like, I see myself as that sort of person. Like I just connect you to the right person. I connect you to the right property and social media is like, networking on crack so like i meet a lot of people that could help solve your problem and you know in certain aspects like contractors um you know people from the city and and all of that how much time did you spend on sort of like self-education type of thing because you have a, such a healthy mindset right when you're in the operation a little too long sometimes you lose the overview of the business and right. and sometimes you can go just a, like you stray off yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. you're getting tired over time and then all of a sudden you start being a little impatient and all that stuff yeah. right? everything that you're saying right now is super it's actually really freaking healthy <laughs> yeah. thank you you know it's not like this all the time it takes effort to stay in this sort of mindset like it takes a lot of effort and it's painful sometimes like sometimes you like want to take shortcuts and it's like wow this would be way easier but that's not very healthy right like eating a snickers bar instead of going to you know a a salad or whatever's healthy whatever but (laughs) you know (laughs) what i'm talking whatever i mean in terms of staying in that healthy mindset like number one stay around the right people right so like you guys are the right people i feel like we're vibing really well so it's you know you, you feel better around the right people and they put you in the right place so that's like number one and then number two if you can't do that find people online where you can <laughs> where yeah. you can like listen to them and sort of like get into that mindset so in the morning if i'm not feeling that great like i'll listen to some podcasts i'll listen to like something educational or something motivational i'm not too big a fan of like the super you know positive Activity movement or whatever i like to listen to some facts or some things that can like help me get mm. around a certain situation so um but yeah anyways listen to something positive in the morning stay away from tiktok as much as possible just post content don't read the comments unless you're watching our stuff <laughs> exactly unless you're watching <laughs> our stuff the stuff that's around you does influence you a lot so the things that help me um staying active like my puppy that's a <laughs> that she she just makes me happy like that yeah. <laughs> and then um the podcast um and then staying around the right people but you know when you're in your office working all the time it's sometimes hard to get out of your own head so when you're a problem solver it's Mm -hmm. really important to uh, to control these things right right? sometimes i tell people that uh when when they're feeling bad or they're feeling down and they say it's because of this that i can't do this i'm like you should really just focus on controlling your chemistry like actually Mm -hmm. who was it Okay, I don't know how the people subscribe to like Jordan Peterson, but like whatever. I do. I, okay. Yeah, I so, listen. We got so much in common. Okay, yeah, I okay, do. Okay. I listen. I read his 12 rules of life too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He said this one <laughs> thing. So like yeah. I sometimes I wake up in the morning and I rush, right? Yeah. Because like um, 
some some sometimes I just like might sleep in or whatever. But I wake up in the morning and I'll rush. And sometimes I forget to eat breakfast. But I can go. I can drink a coffee, and I don't end up eating throughout the whole day. And then right. he says that Jordan Peterson was saying how this one client says to him that I feel bad in the morning. Then he says, "Do you eat breakfast?" And he says, "No, I don't eat breakfast." He's like, well, why don't you eat something? And then he says, "Well, I don't feel hungry." And then he says, "What does that have to do with anything? Just eat two <laughs> eggs in the morning." Right. And I'm just like, okay, I started eating two eggs in the morning, and I feel way better. Right. right? It's just controlling <laughs> your chemistry, right? Mm-hmm. Control what's going into your body, into right. your mind, especially if you are somebody who has to face a day and solve problems throughout the day, because right. you got to take care of self so right. you can take care of other problems. That's exactly it. You have to take care of yourself. And that's something I've had to learn. And sometimes I regress into patterns where I'm not taking care of myself and I face the consequences for that. There was like one where he was talking to a client that only ate the equivalent of like a a cup of rice a day. So, um, and he said, okay, start eating. And she started feeling better. Like it was as simple as that. And I, I remember taking that advice and I realized, oh my God, I'm not eating and I need to, (laughs) I need to eat breakfast. So talking about him though, like the major things I learned from him is like keeping a a good environment around you, a clean room. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Oh, that's really important. Yes. Something as simple as that, right? I love a clean environment. I'm happy in a clean environment. I work more productively there. And then eating is obviously important. (laughs) And <laughs> um, and then exercise if you're feeling like you know yeah. you want to put a little extra in there but yeah if I'm feeling very like out of it like I go right back to the basics because I'm like I'm gonna screw something up on the high level if I don't take care of these basics yeah sometimes we're harder on ourselves and we're like why why can't I do this without any food without any sleep why can't yeah. I function with three hours of sleep <laughs> we need to learn to to get out of that and take care of ourselves and and you can still like have a life and and be successful so it's a balancing act yeah i really love what you're saying largely because we always talk about real estate we always talk about how to do things we always talk about uh the workarounds the methods how to complete a task how to get in how to solve problems in real estate and sometimes we forget that you have to really be able to contend with the basics you know i remember this one book i think uh, it was called making your bed in the morning or it was done by the army guy who mm-hmm. said, you know, make your bed in the morning David with a small task. I think so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just like because uh, that will allow you to keep complete all the other tasks, complete right. the small things. Take care of yourself before you want to go and solve the bigger problems. Because right. some people will, let's say, go and work extremely long hours and they will start committing to these things that are just not sustainable. Right. right? And thinking that you are making progress and you might be making progress for a period of time. But be- but you're not doing yourselves any favors if you're going to burn out. Right. So always make sure to take care of yourself, because honestly, I think you're quite successful, though you're a testament of being only a realtor for eight months and uh, having your own team, having more leads than you can handle. And the fact that you talk about making sure to take care of yourself is no joke, right? right? People yeah. need to listen to this. People need to pay attention. Also, like the when you start with a fundamental, right, it, it really gave you that kind of accomplishment, anchoring one thing in the morning, right? Or right. a couple of things in the morning, and that will set your morning uh, up like for success you're pretty big on social media you're running the social events and you have like two other team members on the U mm-hmm. uh, it's only been eight months <laughs> right you're obviously still an investor yourself continue to expand your real estate portfolio yeah what's your next step I'm planning on getting my own office soon like I do want a bigger space to sustain more team members um, we're gonna make a big studio in that not just in a bedroom in my house so that <laughs> that's like the next step so I do definitely want an office I do want more team members before that I just hired on a video editor so believe it or not i've been editing my own videos the oh, past i wanted to talk eight about months. that oh, <laughs> and uh, i finally caved in and hired the video editor now the next step from there is going to be a social media manager so she could disperse the content because that is like a task time consuming oh my yeah. god so time consuming i've been like i'm trying hootsuite right now to see if like maybe i can get away with it or like get a VA to distribute it for me, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get the the social media manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what? I might have a, a VA for you actually. Oh, really? Yeah, she's she's yeah. been posting all my content. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she's seriously, we can share. Consistent. Yeah, yeah of oh, course. Oh my god, thank you. Yeah, no, there are so many things I feel like you know I'd want to talk about, especially when it comes to the marketing, because a lot of little nitty gritty. I think you know there's a big gap with when it comes to people's understanding of what it takes to go out market themselves and then be able to do the work, because people have mm-hmm. a degree of natural talent in the work, but it mm-hmm. doesn't mean anything if you can't actually find your clientele base right. and put content out there because the world that we live in right this is how you got to do it today yeah. so i think we're going to wrap it up here but if anybody wants to get in touch with you what's the best way for them to connect with you um so melena at winsocialrealty.com is my email i'm on instagram facebook youtube tiktok and all of my contact information is all over there my name's melena simsick like literally search up my name you'll find me i'll release <laughs> and, some information in the description yeah. and uh, we'll wrap it up there